How's it going guys? My name's Aaron, you're watching Aaron's Honda Shit, and today I'm going to show you guys how to install the Burton Racing Coil Unplug Kit in your Honda. As many of you guys already know, this is my 1993 Honda Civic EX Coupe. It has a B18 B1 engine. I have the valve cover off right now because that's the, gonna be one of the first steps to get ready to install your coil unplug kit. This step is pretty specific to non VTEC cars just because there's not too many great ways that you can mount the coil plate on a non VTEC valve cover. So I have these guys right here. I swapped the studs, which normally look like this, out for these guys so I can run whatever bolt length I need to. So the first step would be to take off your valve cover, pull these guys out. They're 10 millimeter and they're in there pretty tight. Um, I use Loctite to put the new ones in just because I don't want them rattling loose because I can't see if the studs are poking through or not, and they are shorter. You're gonna need to get some ECU modifications done to make this coil on plug conversion work. Here's the coil on plug board. See how it attaches to these pins? it goes in place of where the knock sensor board would go if your ECU is knock sensor board equipped. This is a chipped P28. I have a ostrich and a Q-log in the ECU as well. The P28 doesn't normally come with a knock sensor board, but it has the pins to be knock sensor board capable. I did not install this coil and plug chip myself. I had a friend do it. I don't quite trust myself with circuit board soldering yet, so I left it up to him. Burton Racing will install it for you if you ship them your ECU. So that's another way to go about doing it. Here is the coil unplug board sticking out of the top of the ECU as it's mounted in the car. This is where you're going to plug your coil harness into once you have everything installed. I'm going to throw this ECU in the car and I'll move on to modifications needed to mount the coil plate to the valve cover. So here is the B Series non VTEC. I think it's an OBD2 valve cover from the years, like 96 and up, Integra CRVs. And here is the Burton Racing coil plate, and it sits on the valve cover like this, using these two valve cover bolts to mount down. The reason that I took those two studs out is because there won't be enough thread engagement poking up through here for everything to work. First thing you gotta do to modify the valve cover you gotta cut this little bump off. So I'm going to grab a Dremel and I'm gonna go for it right now. So here's the valve cover with the little bump removed. Didn't do a super great job, I missed a little bit, but the only thing that really matters is that this valve cover washer sits higher than this bump. So that the first thing that the coil plate touches is the valve cover washer. So I'm gonna get this thing back on the car and I'm gonna put all the bolts in except for these two and then we're gonna figure out what kind of hardware we need to mount the coil plate permanently to the valve cover. Here is the valve cover mounted back on the engine with no hardware in these two holes. I'm gonna put the coil plate on now and try and find a bolt that'll hold down the coil plate in my bucket of random bolts. Okay, so I found two bolts that I like the length of that mount the coil plate down as well as the valve cover. Next I'm going to get my ignition coils and make sure that they're sitting at the right height. And if not, I may have to add a couple washers underneath and get a longer bolt. So the coils I'm going to use, these are coils out of an S2000, 82. They're the same as K-Series coils, um, same part number and everything. But I'm going to drop these guys in and see how well they fit. So these coils stick way, way up above the coil plate, so I'm going to get some longer bolts and some washers to space the coil plate up a little bit. I'm um, a little worried about clearance with the harness on the oil cap, so I think I might test fit that really quick. The number four coil harness plug gets a little bit close to the oil cap, but I'm still able to take it off. No big deal without having to unplug anything, so I think we'll be doing okay. Okay, so after a couple trips to the hardware store, I came up with these guys, which are some three quarter inch spacers. 
they are not metric, but big deal. Um, this puts the coil plate right about where I need it to be in terms of height for the coil packs to bolt up. So I'm going to use, I think they're 60 mil long Allen cap screws to secure everything down. And I'll get back to you once I have everything mounted up. Here are all four of the coils mounted up. I ended up using a three quarter inch spacer along with a 55 mil Allen headed cap screw to mount the plate to the valve cover. And then I used some just regular cap screws with some washers to mount the coils to the plate. I think this looks pretty nice. Definitely solid. Um, I reached out to Burton Racing. They are going to be redesigning this coil plate with a different mounting style. And I'm gonna probably end up getting one of those when they come out just because I'm not a huge fan of using a spacer and a long bolt, they have threaded standoffs that'll come with the new stuff. So when I end up putting that on, I'll definitely keep you guys updated. But for now, this is pretty solid, not going anywhere. My only concern is that the valve cover might leak under here, but I don't know for a fact. So I'm gonna move on to the wiring portion. So here are the coil packs with the wires on them. I zip tied them together, kind of ran them down here with a P-clamp. Um, the wiring harness is gonna tuck underneath like this, and I'm going to run it through a hole somewhere around here, the same hole that I ran my wide band wiring through. You gotta do a couple things to the ECU before you can plug it in and turn power to the car, and that would be remove the ICM wires. It's not good for the coil and plug harness, apparently, as directed by the instructions. Other than that, I need to plug in the three connections right here, get those figured out, and then we should be good to try and fire it. Per the instructions, the ring terminal goes to ground on the distributor housing, not the thermostat. This larger spade terminal goes to the 12 volt power for the distributor, and the smaller one is RPM signal, at least only on OBD1 cars. I'm gonna get a diagram up and I'll let you know which connectors are which on the harness. So I did a little bit of digging and I found that the blue wire on this two pin plug is the RPM signal and the black and yellow wire is the 12 volt power for the distributor. So I'm going to depin these guys and plug in the coil on plug harness and heat shrink over them. All right, so I depinned the distributor harness on the engine side and I got the 12 volt power and the tack signal plugged in and I heat shrunk over it. I left the stock connector grommets and everything there just in case I want to go back to stock, but I don't anticipate that happening. Next step, I'm going to throw this ground lug on one of the distributor bolts and then I'm going to run the harness inside the cabin. So I got all the wiring kind of tucked up in here. Um, grounded to the distributor right there, running it through the AC drain grommet into the cabin, and I'm going to go over the cabin harness now and depin those two connectors that you need to do for the ICM wiring. All right, so going over to the ECU side, these are the two pins you need to depin. This is A21 and A22. These are the ICM signal wires. In the instructions for the Burton coil unplug kit, you were advised not to have these wires plugged in if you apply power to the ECU. So I'm gonna depin these really quick, flip this connector down, stick some shit in there and pull it out. Um, I'm gonna heat shrink each wire individually and then zip tie it off so it's not dangling around. And then I'm gonna get the ECU installed and plug our little harness plug in and then come up to the distributor and gut all the stuff out that we don't need. Okay, I couldn't find a tool to depin these so I just cut them a little bit ways back and then folded the harness up and zip tied it out of the way. Definitely not super ideal, but it'll work. I'm gonna now plug the ECU in and get this guy routed and probably zip tie it to the rest of the harness. Okay, here's the wiring harness and everything installed in the vehicle. I just kind of tucked everything off to the side, zip tied it up. We're gonna move to the distributor and take out all the unnecessary parts inside of it. So coming up here to the distributor, didn't actually end up taking any of the insides of it out. I'm just gonna leave it how it is, just in case I need to go back. But I will be getting one of the billet caps for this and I will take some of it out. I'm not sure what needs to come out, but I'll figure that out when I get to it. Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can get this thing started up. 
I have some iridium plugs in it by NGK. I know that you need to run resistor type plugs to be able to have the coil on plug work. So I guess we're gonna find out right now if these are resistor plugs or not. So NGK iridium plugs are resistor type plugs. We just found out. Um, yeah, this thing seems like it's running good. You do not have to tune the car once you put this setup in. I'm going to tune the car for other reasons, like a shitty tune done by yours truly. And yeah, I she's running good. I'm gonna let it heat cycle and I'm gonna go give it a test drive. All right, guys, car runs great with the Burton coil on plug setup. Had to do a little bit of finessing to get the thing to sit right on top of the valve cover, but as a whole, super great product not super outrageously expensive. It was like, I think in total in this, I'm like $420, something like that. Not including the coils. Um, car runs the same as it did, no tuning required. And yeah, I'm really satisfied with this product. Once I get a billet distributor cap block off and some standoffs from Burton Racing, I'll give you guys another update. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, comment, tell me why I'm an idiot and subscribe. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.